So hi, I'm Noel Hidalgo. I'm Adrian Schmoker. And we're here at Data and Society, um, a nice research institution in the middle of uh, the Flatiron District. And this is one of the signs for one of the posters that they have. I am going to start sharing my screen so that way we can get into our wonderful slides. So great, I have my slides over here. And with that, uh, this discombobulated voice, oh, I can see that you can still see me. Uh, let's see if I can turn that off. How do I turn that off? Uh, stop video, how about that? There we go. All right, so now uh, this voice is Noel and I'm gonna hand it over to Adrian. Awesome, thanks Noel. Uh, Adrian Schmoker, as mentioned, I'm with the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. I'm their Director of Civic Engagement and Strategy, along with other colleagues at MODA, as the office is known, and at the uh, Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, we make up the Open Data Team. And what, you can, what we're going to be talking about here is listed in the overview here on the first slide. Um, I'm joined here by Noel, the Executive Director of uh, Beta NYC, as we're here to talk to you about Open Data Week. Open Data Week is something that we've done for two years now. Uh, we're entering the third iteration of Open Data Week and really excited uh, to be co-producing this in partnership with Beta NYC. Uh, before I dive into the details, uh, Noel, any uh, housekeeping notes on questions or muting that we should address? Yeah, everybody should be on mute. Please don't share your video. Um, sorry about that. And if you have any questions at all, hop into the chat channel. Um, we have a little. Um, uh, we're, we are monitoring all chat, so uh, make uh, make yourself uh, ask your questions via the chat. Awesome. And then for any folks who might have just joined recently, we are recording the webinar. The goal is to share the recording for folks who weren't able to make last week's webinar or today's webinar um, so that folks in the coming weeks can learn more about Open Data Week themselves and hopefully submit an idea and participate. Uh, so with that, I am going to go ahead to uh, dive into the presentation. So as mentioned, Open Data Week this year is being co-produced in formal partnership between the Open Data team and Beta NYC. Um, I'll go ahead and let Noel share a little bit about Beta NYC. Great, thanks Adrian. Um, so Beta NYC is a nonprofit organization here in the city. We started off as a meetup in 2008. Uh, we now have over 5,000 members and our focus is uh, using technology, data, and design to improve the city's open data law. Uh, if you go check out our website, you'll find a number of different tools that are built on New York City's open data, board stats, SLAM, uh, tenants map. You'll find a number of videos from our events where we help demystify what's going on within uh, New York City government and what's going on within New York City data. We have a pretty active newsletter that goes out to a couple thousand uh, active data knots. Um, and we're always thinking about how do we help uh, accelerate and how we help um, the city uh, accomplish its goal in sharing data. And so we do that through a community data portal, a very active Facebook group, uh, and a number of different reports. Uh, most notably, we have a report on how community boards should, or the challenges that community boards face when looking at open data. Um, we started doing this by writing um, a community manifesto, which is called the People's Roadmap to a Digital New York City, which articulates our mission and vision of what we would like to see happen. And we also are articulated 34 different policy proposals, which helped drive a lot of the different uh, legislative innovation that we've seen over the last six years, as well as help provide uh, a footing to uh, develop different types of programs like the Beta NYC's and the Manhattan Borough President Civic Innovation Fellows. Um, we have four core values. They are the freedom to connect, the freedom to learn, the freedom to collaborate, and the freedom to innovate. Uh, and how we end up articulating those uh, four freedoms is we have built prototypes, we have a pretty active uh, education program, whether it's for CUNY undergraduates, 
to New York City public uh, high school students or to the general public. We are actively doing research around how uh, different entities within the city use open data, i.e. our community boards, how do community-based organizations use data, how do agencies themselves use data, and how can they better improve that data. And then we stand as a platform that uh, articulates these uh, issues and concerns through our advocacy. And so you can always find us at the technology hearing uh, in city council talking about our viewpoint of uh, our community viewpoint of how open data should be articulated. Um, and so we've been running a number of different events. This is a pretty big event that we had with the New York City Parks Department, where we help the Parks Department think through um, how the tree census data uh, would be released. We built a class on top of that tree census data and then worked with the Parks Department themselves to think through how they could use that data within their different business departments. Um, as I previously mentioned, we have a program with our CUNY Service Corps uh, where we employ undergraduate students uh, who want to spend two semesters in a public good organization, we put them to work inside of the Manhattan Borough President's Office, and we help think through how do community boards, how do borough presidents, how do community-based organizations better use open data to articulate their needs and to think through how do they work within the 21st century. It's a little bit of like a digital transformation office, um, but we uh, we don't have, we're not a, as big as 18F just yet, but we're, uh, we're starting there with CUNY undergraduate students. And these students have helped us prototype a number of classes which we give to community board members as well as to the general public and we have now been able to translate those classes to middle school and high school students and so we're in the middle of CS um, CS week here in uh, New York City, which means that all computer science teachers are really invigorating and, and doing special types of programming uh, with their students. And so we've translated all of this material so that way our middle school and high school students have access to open data and are building tools and learning STEM through municipal data. So I'm now going to hand this back over to Adrian as to talk about what is data. Awesome, thanks Noel. And I wanna emphasize, if you haven't heard of Beta NYC, I encourage you to check out the community. They're what, 5,000 strong yep. now? Um, and the city's open data law and open data program would not be where it is today without the support and advocacy of Beta NYC and Noel personally. So um, huge thank you for all of the support um, and advocacy to make the program what it is today. And so excited to be able to partner officially in Open Data Week together. So with that, um, I, I love this slide of what is data. Um, I think that could be a discussion for hours. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take us into what is open data um, in case folks who are joining today are hoping to you know, get an understanding of Open Data Week, but also what the open data part of that is. Uh, I always like to start here with my explanation of Open Data Week, just to ground us in the fact that we're talking about New York City, and that New York City is filled with 8.5 million New Yorkers. This, um, this city that serves you has more than 300,000 people working for it to serve these 8.5 million New Yorkers, where while we are a local municipal government, um, we're serving a population the size of Switzerland. So something to keep in mind is the wonderful diverse scale of New York City as we continue into this conversation. Uh, so thinking about these New Yorkers, the size of the city that serves them and you for those New Yorkers on the call, um, what is that government doing for you? Like a variety of different services, right? Picking up trash, uh, maintaining street trees, 311 is a service you might be familiar with, uh, shoveling snow, and your city is, is digitizing, right? Modernizing, digitizing, becoming a smart city, a variety of different terms. A, a big part of this is also a collecting more data and being more data-driven in how we operate. Turning that data into open data, so this is a photo of Union Square on 14th Street in Manhattan. All these little white squares are actual open data points. So if we think about how the city serves those 8.5 million New Yorkers, what does that look like as a data point, and then how do we make it open? The basic principle of open data is taking data that the city uses and making it available to the public for free in one place. That's the basic premise of New York City, or of open data more generally. And something that's specific about New York City is that this is codified into law. 
So March 7th, 2012, um, advocates and city council also working closely with the city passed the, the first open data law here in New York City, mandating that all public data sets had to be available on one portal by the end of 2018. Um, the open data, op open data is continuing past December of this year, don't worry, um, it's continuing into perpetuity, which is exciting, but it's something worth knowing, uh, both from an open data week context, because that's part of why it's the first week of March, is to celebrate the open data law, but also that open data is pretty unique in a lot of ways, because it's codified into law um, here in New York City. So I'm going to pass it back over to Noel um, to share a little bit more context about that important piece. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, I forgot to add, we are super excited. Um, as Adrian articulated, uh, New York City is fair, fairly unique in the way that not only has our legislation around our open data law has been uh, uh, put together, but also how the community exists. Um, and so it seems like eons ago, well, really it was 10 years ago, so in computer terms it was eons ago. Uh, in, in 2008, 2009, there was this uh, broad narrative conversation around how do we uh, make a more transparent, more responsive, uh, participatory government. Uh, you know, mind you, this is around the time period where the iPhone and the Android platforms were just being introduced. Amazon's web services were just being opened and available to the general public. Google Maps was launching. The whole notion of APIs and, uh, you know, uh, essentially this, this web 2.0 world was just finding its footing. Uh, and so the question came in the, the tech government technology community is how do we make government a platform uh, for these types of technologies? Um, and we're really, really fortunate to have um, uh, kind of a visionary uh, elected official as now the Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, but who was as city council member also saw the opportunity for the public to have information and to be able to hold government accountable, but at at least the bare bones would be to see what government uh, is collecting and how they're collecting it and then try to derive their own insights. And so she first started this uh, open data advocacy work through some uh, laws around uh, the city's 311. And then in 2010, uh, she introduced a piece of legislation that was, that was really, really radical uh, that said that all data, and I know that it sounds absurd to call this radical, but then it was very radical, that all data published on a government website should be online in a single portal, machine readable for everyone without any cost or restriction. And uh, it, it, it was so radical that it took us two years to negotiate the actual terms and conditions uh, around this piece of legislation. And it was done in a collaborative manner between Gail and her colleagues in city council, the mayor's office um, and, and do it, um, the, and advocates through the transparency working group. We sat down and negotiated for two years to say exactly what we wanted to see in the legislation and to realize that it was going to be a much longer conversation and that it would be the beginning of a much longer conversation. And so in 2012, we were able to sit down and to actually get the law passed. And then over the next four years, uh, we worked methodically to use open data and to figure out what are the opportunities for improvement within the piece of legislation before it would expire to make sure that we could then strengthen the city's open data law and make sure that it would exist beyond the expiration date. And so those amendments came online two years ago and have since strengthened our city's open data program to be the most comprehensive and most robust and the most accountable open data legislation in North America. With that, I hand it back over to Adrian. Awesome. Thanks, Noel. Um, so I, I would say I I think this history and this context is really important into understanding the community that's uh, been built and come up around open data. And that community is a big part of what we celebrate 
during Open Data Week, and finding ways to expand that community is another important part of Open Data Week, which brings me to the quote on this slide. Um, I, I love this quote because it really encapsulates the uh, values behind the Open Data Program. While we are governed by a series of laws and amendments, we're also governed uh, by values. And one of those core values we translate into the open data mission, which is open data for all. And that's a core component of Open Data Week because one of the core goals is how do we bring open data to more communities and how do we continue to raise awareness that open data belongs to you, that it belongs to New Yorkers. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about the philosophy of open data, how your government works, how it creates that data, what that open data is, what does this actually look like? Um, open data is a website, nyc.gov slash open data, and here's a screenshot of it. If you click on the, the data tab on the menu up there, you get to different navigation options for actually getting to the data. If we clicked on new data sets, uh, this, these are the results you would have received probably a few months ago. I can see that this has about 1,800 results. We actually have about 2,100 data sets on the platform right now. Uh, for those of you who are a bit more um, data savvy, about 10% of those are automated. So our receiving automatic updates, others have manual updates, and about 400 of those data sets are geospatial in nature. We get about 30,000 visitors on average per week to this site. So going back to the platform itself, you can see that if you search or if you filter based on different uh, types of results or different agencies, um, these, this is what the results pop up as. If we clicked on, let's say, street hail livery permits, you would get to this landing page, which gives you core background information about the data set. Under that attachment section is where you'll find your data dictionary, which contains a lot of really important information about the data set. If you click explore data or view data, um, you then, bam, are able to get access to the data right in your browser. So you need a device and you need an internet connection and you actually have direct access to the city's data, more than 2,000 data sets for free to use however you would like. You can filter it directly in your browser, you can export it. Um, there, you have a lot of different options in terms of how you're going to engage with the data, but wanted to kind of take the time for those of you, again, who might have come to this webinar because you're open data curious uh, to know to learn a little bit more about what this thing is that we call open data. Um, it's a series of laws in New York. It's a global movement, uh, but brass tacks is that you're getting uh, city data in your browser to be able to then manipulate however you'd like. So uh, getting into Open Data Week, uh, why I believe a lot of us have joined this conversation here today. Um, as you've already heard uh, both Noel and I reference a little bit, Open Data Week is a celebration, a celebration of everything we've just discussed, the history of open data, um, the platform itself, but most importantly, the community that surrounds open data. Open Data Week itself runs the first week of March annually. So for 2019, that will be Saturday, March 2nd through Saturday, March 9th. The reason for this is that the first Saturday in March tends to be International Open Data Day. It does land again. It's going to land uh, that way again for us in 2019, which is great. And March 7th is the anniversary of New York City's open data law. So this works out really serendipitously for us here in New York City to really bring different communities together to celebrate open data. Um, Noel, do you wanna share a bit about yeah. International Open Data Day? So, you know, as I was mentioning in 2009, uh, 2008, uh, there was this idea of how do we take these consumer-based uh, uh, practices that were, you know, open information, open data, um, and how do we bring them into into government? And so David Eaves and a in a collection of other uh, then Gov 2.0 advocates um, said, "Hey, let's have a day that's dedicated and that becomes a focal point of either advocating or thinking and playing around with open data." And so here in New York and in New York State. Um, uh, 
Open Data Day has kind of uh, taken a couple of different forms. It has had a couple of different names. Uh, it, it has been in a couple of different locations, all the way up from uh, Capitol Camp up in Albany, which was the first unconference inside of a state house, uh, to having a, a code across, which was a, a coding opportunity to take data and put it into use, to then now to School of Data, which is a broad celebration um, of before there was open data week, there was school of data, which celebrated the open data law. Um, and then we were, we found a very uh, um, receptive individual inside of New York City government to take upon the mantle to spread the birthday party and celebration of open data to the full week. Um, but we still like to kick off uh, that, that week through uh, NYC School of Data. And NYC School of Data is a community festival. It's a community day where we have a series of panels, conversations, workshops, and demos that come from the community um, as well. And that community is multi-headed. It's you know, our friends and allies inside of government. It's our friends and allies in, in uh, community-based organizations and advocacy organizations, uh, educators and teachers, uh, civic hackers, everybody who's thinking through what are the three components uh, that make up data or how is data leveraged within this ecosystem. Um, if you go to uh, uh, schoolofdata.nyc, uh, you'll see the last few years that we've had of, of, of School of Data. And, and what we're looking to do in this year's uh, School of Data is to have a uh, uh, as diverse conference that we've had over the last few years. So we're looking for a mixture of panels and we're looking for a mixture of workshops and presentations. You don't have to have a fully fledged idea. We just want to hear from the community what you are interested in speaking about or potentially organizing. And we'll get a, a little bit later into this web form that we're asking for ideas from. But essentially, School of Data is a platform for the community, for government, uh, to have people talk about their issues, their concerns, the opportunities, so that way we can kick off School of Data and Open Data Week and International Open Data Day. Awesome. Thanks, Noel. So School of Data, um, just as a recap, is a very important part of Open Data Week and acts as the kickoff to the entire week. There have been, what, close to 200, 250 people have attended in the past? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, on average, it's around 250 people. Um, we, it's inclusive so that we, we provide child care. Um, it's in a, an accessible location. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's the largest event of School of Data or Open Data Week um, so far. Yes, definitely. And I would say that um, for those of you who are interested in figuring out how to do an event for Open Data Week, if you're not sure that you have access to a venue or if you need help finding speakers, School of Data can be a really great way to get involved your first year or to get involved. Period. Um, because the fantastic Beta NYC team and School of Data team take care of some of those logistics for you. So just to keep in mind, um, you know, participating in Open Data Week can be done by participating in School of Data and or by just producing your own event as a part of Open Data Week. Um, so on this slide, um, I won't read it fully because it has been sitting up here for a little while. Um, a lot of these details are also on the submission form itself. We are going to be circling uh, the recording of the webinar so that you have these details, uh, but all of these details are also, again, on the submission form. Uh, key things to note are that the submission form, both for Open Data Week and School of Data, it's in the same form. So the form will be responsive based on um, whether you want to submit an event for School of Data and or Open Data Week. So it's just one form this year for those of you who are coming back for the second time. You'll hear from the NYC um, uh, Open Data Week planning team by January 11th, and then we'll be working with organizers to set up your events for promotion by the end of January. 
So all of these dates feel far away because we're still in December 2018, but I assure you Open Data Week will be here before we know it. Things to keep in mind with your submission, uh, how you plan to engage New Yorkers, again, thinking back to our mission of Open Data for All, wanting to make sure that um, we're able to reach new communities, engage new communities in thinking about open data. You can have an event that's about data or data ethics or other broader conversations. And as long as you touch on open data at one point, we, we feel like you're doing your part in spreading the word about open data. Um, we want to make sure you can promote your own event. Uh, we will be helping promote all events through a website, through press, other promotion but you need to be able to help promote as well. Uh, we want to make sure that the event is inclusive. Um, ideally, you know, it's easily accessible, it's free. That being said, we have showcased events that aren't necessarily open to the public or that do have a cost. Uh, we wanna make sure we're transparent about all of that. Uh, your event won't be, you know, we're not just taking free events, uh, but if it is uh, available to the public, that's definitely a huge plus. Um, and then on the, the last part here, additional resources, um, I do, and I'll go ahead on to this next piece here, but um, we do want to be clear from the beginning that uh, the Open Data Week team does not have financial resources to distribute to different organizers. The way that Open Data Week runs is it's not a week-long conference happening in one place. Um, it, we do not have grants or other funding that we can distribute to different organizers, but rather it's a way of bringing different organizers across the city, potentially internationally. I've heard a bit of interest on that front this year, but bringing different organizers together to produce your own events, which we then promote on in one central place on the Open Data Week website. And again, promotion, regard, like meaning press releases, uh, the city puts a lot of weight behind promoting Open Data Week, uh, but just want to provide clarification on that from the beginning. We do know that it takes resources to produce events, uh, but we unfortunately cannot provide actual financial resources. We will connect organizers to each other where people ask and where we feel like it will be beneficial to, for the organizers to help support each other. Um, so if you do need help, like do feel free to ask, uh, but depending on the ask, we may or may not be able to support. Um, Adrian, can I add? So if, if you are in one of those conditions where you don't have the resources to put together an event, um, if you are concerned about the logistics as Adrian articulated earlier, um, this is what we hope that School of Data can help provide, is that we are uh, a kind of like the kickoff venue and the kickoff uh, uh, opportunity for you to submit that idea and we want to see how we can work your idea and your concepts and and you know what you're thinking about doing into school of data so that way it further amplifies the the the, the mission of school of data being a, also a community event you know our areas that we're thinking about doing are digital literacy and privacy uh, smart cities open government and civic and government technology and and um, service design. Um, so, you know, like it, we have a very broad definition of how data can be included. And so if you have any questions, if you have any concerns about bringing those resources to host your conversation, we want Beta NYC and School of Data wants to help facilitate that for you. Awesome. Yes, uh, reaching more and new communities, always, um, always of interest and definitely a primary goal for Open Data Week. Um, so what do these events look like? We've talked about School of Data as an event. Um, we encourage people to be as creative as possible. Like think about the community you have access to or the community you don't have access to and how you could bring them together around a common, um, common idea, a common engagement. In the past, folks have led open data trainings. Um, there have been art exhibits, there have been data jams, hackathons, themed events like data and health is something that General Assembly put on in 2017. Um, data in the construction industry is something that Urban X helped host a panel conversation about in 2018. Um, announcements, uh, NYC Opportunity, uh, a sister agency of MODA in the Mayor's Office of Operations made an announcement about their Benefits and Programs API, I believe in 2017. Um, 
And you can see a lot of other examples. Open Data Week 2017 we had 12 events across three boroughs. We engaged about 900 New Yorkers. Uh, we were very excited to, to be able to pull Open Data Week together in such a short period of time that year. Um, 2018, we had a little bit more lead time, which was great. Uh, 30 events, I believe we had about 23 different organizers producing those 30 events, which was really exciting. We nearly doubled basically all of our engagement metrics, which was awesome. If you go to the Open Data Week website, which is open-data.nyc, you'll still be able to see the variety of different events. You can read the small text a little bit, but there was an event that engaged foster youth at the College of Staten Island, where the youth created art in reaction to statistics uh, by the Administration for Children's Services. Um, there was an open data art exhibit hosted at the Made in New York Media Center over the course of an entire week. There was a data jam hosted at Grand Central Tech about the L train shutdown. Really a huge broad range of different ways that we could start conversations about data and about open data. So with that, uh, the next step, if you're interested, is to submit your idea by January 4th on this form. If you received the email for this webinar, you probably received the link to the submission form as well. Um, this is the somewhat complicated bit.ly link uh, for the submission form. Um, there's also the contact email address that you can get in touch with the entire Open Data Week team. It's team2019 at open-data.nyc. I would say that um, in terms of your submissions, you don't have to have all of your details ironed out just yet. It's fine to submit your idea at this stage, but we would want to make sure that you've started active conversations around finding a venue or finding other resources that you need to produce your event. Just because in January, going back to those timelines, if you submit by January 4th, you'll be notified by the following Friday, January 11th. And then we're going to try to get your um, event bright, like your sign up page live by the end of January. So to, um, so to make sure that you're set up for success, I uh, would say, you know, submit the nugget of the idea now, get in touch with the Open Data Week team if you want to talk out any details, uh, but do get the ball rolling on figuring out like how you could actually make your event a reality. Anything else, Noel, that I'm missing? Mm, probably, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm not remembering. You do such a good job covering all the other things. If you have any questions at all, um, uh, as we are now in the Q&A section, uh, please hop into the chat um, and we will uh, answer them. So let me see how the video looks like here. And people can just on the Zoom submit their questions through the chat, is yep. that right? Yep, so there's that little chat window here. Uh, let me see if I can get back to the video. Okay, so there we have your two hosts for the day. All right, who's got questions? Does anybody have any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Noel, can you talk through some examples of past School of Data sessions or speakers? Uh, so I can, uh, so yes, I can. Um, if you go to our YouTube page, you can also find a whole listing um, of them. Um, over the last few years, uh, so um, what was it, last fall, uh, there was a piece of legislation uh, that Jimmy Vaca um, uh, sponsored, council member Jimmy Vaca sponsored about uh, algorithmic transparency. Um, and, you know, like if you see the, the thing that we have, uh, the poster behind us is, uh, you know, uh, artificial intelligence and human rights. So uh, one of the, I know, uh, uh, one of the con concerns that we have is, um, so here, if you go to a YouTube page, you can find all the different videos um, uh, as an example. Um, but one of the concerns that we've had is, um, uh, you know, uh, if government is using data um, to make decisions about resources or provide social services, um, what do we do? Like, how do we hold an algorithm as accountable as the human being that is essentially 
programming that algorithm? How do we look at data? Because we know that data is a reflection of society and our society is biased. There are prejudices um, that are represented within our world. We do not live in a perfect world. And so if data is, is a reflection of our society and these algorithms are being uh, written by, by humans, how do we hold the data and the algorithms accountable? And so we've had a few sessions. We've actually had two uh, um, kind of like flagship sessions that think through uh, algorithms and discrimination and how do we build a framework uh, to ensure proper accountability on both sides of, of that particular equation. We've had the uh, cities. Um, uh, uh, civic service design studio come in they're from nyc opportunity and really talk about how do they use uh, data informed practices to improve uh, public services for those people living in poverty and how to ensure that you are able to target not only the known marginalized populations but then how do you go out and use data to find the voids within those different realms and be able to start targeting other populations that aren't necessarily even represented within the data or how do you build a data practice so that way you can uh, know what is useful uh, when you're building a web tool um, uh, a, a web tool to serve uh, different types of populations who speak different types of languages or who have different uh, uh, cultural understandings. Um, let's see here. We've had last year um, something that was just brought up in the New York Times uh, yesterday um, that featured Heat Seek and Just Fix and uh, A N H D. Um, that there's been a how there's been a coalition of individuals and organizations coming together to help demystify New York City and New York State's housing data. Uh, because it's not super transparent. Um, and so they've had a few different sessions talking about what are their objectives, and they use it as an opportunity uh, to more or less think through and think in public what could be done to help improve uh, uh, kind of their own understanding and then maybe make some tools and move forward. Um, so yeah. those are three. Um, we have a question from uh, the internet. Have you received requests for certain events about different data? Um, have we received uh, requests for certain events about different types of data? Well, um, I think Adrian, you were just talking about that there were specialized events about specialized, like there, was, there were events about special types of data, yes. right? Yeah. Um, what were some of those? The, there was the foster care, yeah. there was the L-Train hackathon. Yeah, there's also um, data health, or health data rather, is a conversation that General Assembly hosted in 2017. They brought a panel together to talk about the growth of data collection in the health industry. And uh, open data was a part of that. Andrew Young from the GovLab contributed to that conversation and the open data lens. Uh, data in the construction industry was something that was discussed last year. Data from the Department of Buildings was a prominent part of that conversation, as some of you might imagine, being here in New York City. So I, I would say that there, what I find super fun and exciting about open data is that there's so many different ways that you can talk about open data, right? You can talk about open data as a movement and as a new way for government to operate, and there's a whole range of conversations around there, and I think some of the algorithmic transparency um, conversation that Noel was alluding to can, can be a part of that, that conversation about the future of governance, the future of open government, of good government, and how open data plays a part in that. And then there's like the brass tacks of, you know, maybe some of what the Housing Data Coalition works on is how do we actually use some of the data sets from some of these specific agencies, bringing that community together and talking about, you know, what works, what doesn't, what could be easier, what's confusing about the metadata, what's really helpful and exciting and interesting about what's coming out soon or about what people are already building. Um, and there's a huge range in between, right? So, um, I, I would say that the sky is the limit in terms of thinking about what conversation you want to drive. If you don't already have a community and you don't already have an audience, but you have an idea of something you would like to discuss or that you'd like feedback on, that I think would be a good candidate for School of Data because School of Data, as the community conference kickoff to Open Data Week, draws a great community, right? Um, 
if you already have a community and an audience and a good group of people that you feel, you know, show up, then I would encourage you and push you to produce your own event. And there are, of course, ways you could participate in School of Data by attending or by speaking and maybe leading a session there as well. But if, if you have your own community, I would push you to think about how to produce your own event. And if you need help thinking about how open data fits into your community, then uh, that, that's where the Open Data Week team can be helpful in, uh, in brainstorming. And if you're interested in having a better understanding of types of events that have happened, I'm scrolling right now through uh, open-data.nyc, which is the Open Data Weeks uh, website, and just kind of going through the calendar here so that you can see the different types. So there have been workshops, there's panels, there's showcases, there's tours, there's conferences, receptions, there's demos, there's community events, there's virtual engagements. Let's say you don't have the opportunity opportunity uh, to hold something together, but you really want to showcase, you know, your your community's tool or your business uh, business's tool. Uh, if you want to have a virtual panel and do it through, you know, Zoom or one of these other online platforms that that bring people together, you know, you can you can do that. the The goal is ultimately is to foster and point a week, well, really is to point out a week that celebrates open data and foster events within that. Um, and we, we are very open to understanding, uh, having a better understanding of types of events that can be held um, for Open Data Week. Do we have more, more questions from the group chat here? Um, so I'm looking at a list of questions that have been asked in the past. Uh, one question we've received in the past is what type of organizations or companies are involved? Uh, we've seen nonprofits host events, companies host events, uh, community groups, student groups from different universities that are focused on computer science, data science. Um, New York City agencies have hosted events. Um, so I, I wouldn't say there's a limitation in terms of what type of organization you are also. Yeah, we're also developing an FAQ. So Adrian is scrolling <laughs> through the FAQ. Um, let's see if there's anything else that's important to mention. Um, I think that might be it. Yeah, yeah. for now. Okay. Should we leave it at that? Yeah, well, uh, from the Beta NYC side of things, we're really, really excited about this uh, continued collaboration around open data. Um, you know, data is an opportunity to have discussions about how to improve the city. And we've been really thankful to have Adrian uh, uh, on board on the city side and being our ally, uh, our inside woman, um, to be able to make some change happen uh, and to foster this really amazing community and to foster this uh, broad ecosystem that is thinking about how do we not only improve the data, but improve government operations uh, through these uh, uh, opportunities. And so Adrian, thanks for your hard work to putting together all of the things that you've done uh, to support the Open Data uh, website and then also support the Open Data team. Uh, really thankful for that. And we're looking forward to working with you to do Open Data Week and School of Data 2019. So. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And uh, I would just say it's a team effort. We have literally close to 100 open data coordinators at every city agency helping to make your open data possible and what it is. Um, I think a few folks were on the webinar today, so I just want to make sure that um, it, it's, it's more than just me <laughs> in the city. There, there's an army of folks uh, who believe in this and are pushing it forward. And uh, it's a uh, um, it's going to be a huge benefit, and uh, we're very excited to have Beta NYC so uh, involved for 2019. So excited to meet all of you. Hope that uh, you all submit um, proposals for Open Data Week and School of Data, and uh, we'll see you on the other side in 2019. Great, and thanks everyone for attending. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.